Hello everyone, Hyper here, and this will be the second video in the Castle Nathria series for the Unholy DKs. Sorry it took a while between the first and second video, but I should be back on track and uh, churning these out one or two a week just until we catch up. So I'm going to pause the footage here to talk a little bit about my talents, um, my setup, and what I was running. So I was using Deadliest Coil Legendary. This video was recorded on the second week of Mythic, so the... Quantum device pre-pull shenanigans wasn't fixed yet, so you will see me use a pre-pull, then swap away from it. Um, you can no longer do that, so you should be using like the PvP versatility trinket that procs strength or something along those lines, along with IQD if you're trying to parse, or some other reliable trinket if you are doing this fight on farm. For talents, it was a default talent build. I chose to use Asphyxiate just because with our strategy, the shades of bar gas were never further than my regular death grip range and having asphyxiate just added an extra stun to my kit however depending on your strategy if those shades of bar gas are typically kind of far away from the boss and you have to grip them in then you can run death's reach that will help you out a little bit other than that this fight is all about just doing single target damage um two target cleave is a very weird spot for unholy dk because they're not enough targets for you to like do an AOE rotation um, so you pretty much treat two target as single target um, but yeah other than that let's get started and I will talk you through cooldown uses and so on roll the footage on pull you want to use absolutely everything army a bomb limb unholy blight dark transformation apoc and your first potion um, I honestly don't think I use my first potion here but you so you depending on how long this fight takes you and it shouldn't take you more than five minutes you can either use your first potion on pull or with bloodlust in the last phase kind of up to you uh, they're both great spots to use that so in this first phase you pretty much go in use your cooldowns and then build up festering wounds on the boss drop your dnd and start cleaving with scourge strike i see a lot of people do like two festering strikes on the boss one on the bear and then DND and Scourge Strike spam. And basically, as your DND times out, the bear is going to be in execute and you can start using Soul Reapers on it. So as you can see here, I keep tabbing to the bear every time um, my Soul Reaper is up just to get a few extra casts on it. And pretty much as soon as the bear is at 40% health, you can start Soul Reapering it just because it drops so fast. Now my second use of Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation was up there. I used it on cooldown, there's nothing you really need to save it for. Uh, same with this Apocalypse. One thing that I do whenever Bargas spawns is that I use an Outbreak on it. Normally you don't want to use Outbreak to apply Varian Plague. However, in this situation, the bear never gets close enough to the boss for me to apply it with Unholy Blight. So I just cast an Outbreak on it manually. Um, now, after Bargast is brought back to the boss, you kind of have a few choices depending on how long your tanks are going to keep him there. As you can see, I was trying to get that Unholy Blight off uh, to apply the dot, but the bear got pulled out. Bargast got pulled out two to three seconds too soon for me. Um, and then I end up just applying that outbreak manually. So this is kind of going to depend on your push time just a little bit. When it's time to grip in these shades, um, you usually want to do it, I believe, at around 80 energy. You just want to start hitting it. Um, you still don't have enough targets to do like a full AoE rotation. You can drop D&D if you want to. A big thing is trying to snipe a Soul Reaper. I wasn't comfortable enough with the fight here to know exactly how fast these would die. Sometimes they die super quick, other times they take a little while. But if you can get a Soul Reaper on them, they will do a ton of damage. Um... And then after this first set of adds are dead, Vargast is already like 20 to 10% health. I should be tabbing to it and using Soul Reaper on cooldown. Um, that is a big mistake. I could have gone in probably two to three Soul Reapers just there. Instead, I end up getting only one. So that is a pretty significant damage loss that I just incurred. Also, I used my Abomination's Limb earlier on um, during the Shade of Vargast, as you saw. However, if your fight time is under four minutes, I believe it's better to save it until your second army of the dead um, and then you can use army, a bomb with you know other cooldowns on holy blood dark transformation if they line up. So once you get to phase three 
it's pretty much treated as a pure single target fight. Um, Huntsman is going to be sub 35%, so you're going to Soul Reaper it over and over. Um, and that also kind of puts you a little bit back on resources just because you do have to commit those Soul Reapers. So in this phase, it's not really worth dropping DND. And also, I don't really hit Hecutus. Um, I stand next to him just so Unholy Blight applies those dots and ramps up. But other than that, I literally just single target Huntsman the entire time. Um, as far as defensive and utility that we have as Unholy DKs on this fight, Anti-Magic Zone for this last phase is extremely useful whenever Hecutus is being moved around to drop stacks. You can drop AMZ on the melee, it will negate quite a bit of damage. Um, AMS will do the same. If you are in danger, you can AMS while Hecutus is being moved because it's nature damage. However, AMS's big role on this fight is for Sin Seekers. If you get targeted by Sin Seeker, um, depending on your strategy, in this last phase we sacrifice Sin Seekers so it doesn't work. But in the first and second phase, if you get targeted by Sin Seeker and you run out, you can AMS. And before the Sin Seeker hits you, you will not get the bleed portion of that mechanic. So that is a very nice thing um, Unholy DKs can do. And also in the last phase, if you get targeted with the Petrifying Howl, which is like the debuff that you have to run out with and drop it off, you can disadvance and it will negate the slow element of that mechanic. But yeah, other than that, guys, this fight is super straightforward. Do single target, pop your CDs as they come up, try to get as many Soul Reapers on the bears as possible, um, and then in the first, in the third phase, just treat it as a single target fight. But yeah, besides that, this fight is super straightforward. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you guys. Or you can also join my Discord where you can ask me questions directly and I can get back to you. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.